Good morning. Hello, they will go to mining for day one. Maybe few of them. Good morning, guys. Let's give teacher Om an opportunity to do a warm up with us before we start. Okay, guys, please open your camera and then please. Hello guys, welcome to my workshop. Let's see today. Ah, uh, my new God, Manu, can you stop? Oh, okay. Please relax. The right hand and the left hand D and the right hand L, and then Y. Please, okay, ten times. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, guys. Good job. Thank you so much. Well, well done, guys. Welcome back. Good. It's good to have you guys back here with us. So today we're going to look at something a little bit different in science. We're going to move forward and we're going to look at the stars and the constellations. We've looked at the weather. We looked also at how can we measure air pressure. We've looked at humidity and the life cycle of water called the water cycle. We've discussed how air vapor works and water vapor and the air mixed together and how clouds are formed. But today I want us to look at stars and star signs. And get a few star signs. So there are 12 star signs. So every month there is a new star sign and we'll also have a look at that. But before we get to that, I wanted us to watch a short video just explaining what are stars and constellations and how far are they from us and what are the biggest stars in the universe that we have found. So for that, I'll pause the video. So that was just a quick introduction video to stars and constellations. Did you guys see how small the sun is compared to some of the other stars we have found in the universe? And if you compare Earth- No, the, the Earth is the biggest because no. the sun rotates around the Earth. <laughs> no, the Earth rotates around the sun. It's the other way. <laughs> no, no. It <laughs> has to rotate the, the sun orbits around the Earth. <laughs> Then the sun has to be very fast for how big it is. But okay, so for us to start, I wanted to have a quick look at some of the stuff in the book, just to show us and teach us a little bit about what's going on out there in the night when we look up at the stars. So let's start off by reading here. Stars in the sky are in space which is outside the atmosphere of the planet with both stars and planets. So stars are light sources, which can be seen. So that's why we can see stars because they share their light. The planet is not a light source, but can be visible because of the sun's rays on the planet, then reflected into the eyes. Okay. No, Earth is. I'll show you. I'll show you uh, another video uh, next week. Uh, we can look at the planets and we can see how small Earth is compared to the universe. It's not even. No, as the small. Earth. The Earth is the center of the universe because everything rotates around the Earth. <laughs> we would. We would. We would be that lucky, but unfortunately, we are not. We cannot, the Earth is quite small. Even though it seems like a big planet, the Earth is one of the smallest that we are living on. We don't know if there's any life outside there, but who knows? We'll have another video in next week to show some of that, how, how big the universe is. So let's first look at the rising and setting of stars in the night sky. So the rising and setting of stars, the stars in the night sky 
look to us as if they rise and set. This is because of the earth rotates. Stars appear in the east, move across the sky and then, <coughs> excuse me, and then set in the west. It is similar to the movement of the sun, which also rises in the east and sets in the west. This is because as the earth rotates, the horizon in the east moves down and we start to see stars appearing there. So how, why do we see stars? Stars is because the earth rotates and some parts of the earth, it might be daylight. On the other part of the earth, it might be nighttime. So at nighttime, we can see the stars, the, all the other stars out there because the sun is not blocking the vision that we have. Because during the day, the sun is very bright. So when the sun shines, we cannot see the stars or the moon because the sun is too bright. But when the sun sets, the, 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 the dark sky lights up with all these beautiful stars and the moon. And that's something we can see in Pechabun, but it's something you won't often see in Bangkok. Bangkok is a very polluted city. And a lot of the air pollution blocks out the stars at night. So you don't see them at all. So the Earth's horizon is the line we see where the Earth's surface meets the sky. Interesting quote, comment there. So let's look at the directions of stars in the sky. We have the azimuth and we have the altitude. So the azimuth is the horizon, oh, sorry, the azimuth is the horizontal direction of an object given in degrees as an angle. It can be described as a complete circle going from the east. north to the east. Yes? Do you see the sun is rotated around the earth? No, the sun does not rotate around the earth. We rotate around the sun. We are the one that is moving. Why are we moving? Because of the gravity that the sun gives us. The sun is so powerful, it pulls everything closer to it, but not all the time. So what I happens is we, the sun is in the middle, pulling everything and keeping everything in place. And we are the one going around the sun. So that means the, the sun is the center of the universe. The sun is the center of our solar system. But the universe is very big. It's insanely big. And uh, I'll show another video to you guys in the next lesson. Or maybe I'll show it at the end of the lesson. So if you are patient and uh, you listen carefully, I can show you another video a little bit later. Okay. So and the altitude is the vertical angle taken from the Earth's horizon to the point above it. Not too worried about these words. They are very big words. We won't use them quite often in really speaking. But look at the picture over here. This picture shows a star with an azimuth of 250 degrees and an altitude of 45 degrees. So a, a, the point above the head, and we have the altitude over here with 45 degrees, and we can see the star sitting there. So this pictures, these are very, very, difficult pictures to read if you have to talk about or read about these kind of things. And it takes astrologers years to gather information about a single specimen they find outside. So it's a, it's a career that you spend a lot of time just doing a lot of research. Okay. So you can estimate the altitude of a star by stretching one arm in front of you closing one eye and using your other eye to look at your hand. You can then use your hand to estimate the altitude of the star as shown in the picture. So you can 
put your hand in front of you and you close your eye when you look at the star. And they say you can measure the altitude. The altitude is the angle of the star from where you see it. Okay, quite interesting. So here they show us the illustration. So in if the width is equal to the little finger, the altitude is 1%. If the width is equal to three middle fingers, the altitude is 5%. So if you hold it, like, I can move back a little bit from here. Let me see. So when we look at the star, we hold our hand in front, we close our eye and we look at the angle of it. We can use our three fingers in front. We can use the first, we can use the wide one, the wide two fingers, or we can use our whole hand. Let's look at the last one here. They say if the width is equal to the distance between your index finger and your little finger, the altitude is 15 degrees. Okay, so we can measure altitude using the hand. These are just interesting things for or interesting experiments you can do at night with your family, test it with them and see how it works. So like we all know, we all have maps on planet Earth. We have a map. So if we are going to a new place, we can use a map to get there. These days we can use our cell phones or a GPS, which is a global positioning system, which can take us to a certain place. So for instance, I'm not from Thailand. And if I visit different places, I don't want to get lost. So I put on my GPS on the map and it takes me to where I want to go. The same is for stars. We also have a map of stars. And let's read about that. So the star map is a map of the sky used to study the location and the shape of the constellations. The star map in Thailand divides the sky into two half circles called the North Star Map and the South Star Map. So these are quite interesting. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I want you guys to read with me over here. So I'll read it first, and then you guys will read after me. Okay. So the North Star map consists of six constellations of stars, which are Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, and Leo. The South Star map consists of six constellations of stars, which are Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, and Aquarius. Hmm. So let's practice reading that one or two times to practice some of the star signs and the words. So you guys can start reading for me from the North Star, please. You can start reading now. <clears throat> From the North Star, all together, yeah. North Star map. So North Star map consists of six constellations of star, which are Pisces. Pisces. Aries, uh, Aries, Taurus, Taurus, Taurus Gemini, 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 Leo. Very good. And, this, and the other part here, the South Star? The South Star. 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 Consists of six constellations of stars, which are Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, 
Next one is Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Very good. And we have Capricorn. Capricorn. And Aquarius. 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 Yes, excellent. Aquarius. Okay. Very good. So the star map instructions. Turn the inner circle of the map to the date that you want to stargaze. Make sure that the line of the date and the line of the time are in the same place. For example, if you want to stargaze on December 15 at 9 p.m., you have to turn the star map and put the line of December 15 and the line of 9 p.m. together. Then turn them to the north direction and hold the map. Make sure that the north direction of the star map is below. After that, stargaze by comparing the stars with the star map. So this is what they say you can do if you want to go at night and look at the stars. Let's say, for example, they chose the date, the 15th December at 9 p.m. So you have a star map that you get if you want to look at the stars. You can look at them through a telescope that makes you look further, or you can look at them with your naked eye. So what they mean that here is, you can move the star map to where the time and the date is, and then you can look at the map and look at the stars and see if you can identify all the different constellations. Okay. So at the bottom, what is a constellation? The names of the constellations differ according to the beliefs, lifestyles, and cultures of people in different countries. Astronomers choose to choose the brightest stars in each constellation to set the shape and the name of the constellations to be the same standard around the world. So if there's a new star that is seen, um, everyone in the world uses the same way of identifying and naming it so that there's no confusion. If you go looking, at, looking for stars in Thailand, or you can go looking for stars in America, you will see the same stars with the same names. All you have to do is get the star map from the country you are in, and you can go have some fun stargazing. Okay. So this is the signs of the zodiac. Now these are the different star signs that we just read. We have the north and the south star signs. Let's zoom a little bit in here and see the differences and how they look. So here we can see the first one is Capricorn. It looks almost like a, a goat, a little bit. We get Aquarius, looks like a woman with a hair hanging. You have Pisces, Pisces looks like two fish. You have Aries, Aries, which is the ram. I'm an, I'm an Aries, my, my star sign is Aries. And then you have the Taurus, which is also a type of bull. You have the Gemini, which is the two people that stand together. You have Cancer, which looks like a crab. You have Leo, of course, for the lion. You have Virgo, which I'm not 100% sure what that picture is. And then we have Libra, which is like a balancing scale. We have Scorpio, which is the scorpion. And then we have Sagittarius, which is the half man, half horse with the bow and arrow, almost like a centaur. So these star signs have different personality traits. 
So people tend to look at star signs to see how their week is going to go. Because as the earth moves and the seasons change, the stars are sitting in different places. And they, people believe that we get energy from the stars and we get our, our own mentality changes if we go through different phases of <clears throat> our lives. So these are the 12 constellations that are located in a circle as shown on the picture on the next page. Before you go to the next page, this star signs, they are the same all across the world. No difference. The same star signs in America, the same star signs in Africa, the same as in Europe, and the same as in Asia. They're all the same. They do not change. Okay. Important to remember. So here's the star map that we talked about earlier. Do you think you can read this map? Who can tell me? Do you think you are able to read this map? Anyone want to try? And think about it. Well, to read this map, you need a lot of practice. For example, I, I am a science teacher. I do not understand how to read this map clearly because I, I don't really like to watch stars and find who they are, where they are. I like to, to watch the stars for the beauty they give us and not to always find out where and how or what they are and what we are doing. So the first one over here, we can look, we find cancer over here. On the star map, you will find all 12 of the stars and the star signs because of the different constellations constellations so for that reason as the earth moves we also change our minds change our thought processes change some people love certain times of the year and other times they don't like it's sometimes all to do with our star signs the way we feel at times so let's read what they tell us here. According to the picture, when the earth moves, the location of A, let's find where did they put A. So you can follow along in your books, but I would rather look here. It's better to look here. So here's A. So as the earth moves, the location A on 21 March, we will see the sun appear in Pisces. So, the sun will appear through here. I'm sorry, wrong, wrong marker. So, the sun will go through A on March 1, going through Pisces. Uh, move my camera just a moment. Okay. And then the, and the sun will appear in Pisces at that time. When it is 21st April, the Earth is located at the location B, which is Aries. It seems like the sun moves from Pisces to Aries in one month. So the sun keeps moving while we know we, we keep moving around the sun. And as the time goes on, we're moving towards different star signs and constellations. So for me, I, I'm born on the 7th of April, my star sign is Aries. So Aries runs, I think, from 22 March to 22 April, somewhere around that. So every month, there's a new sign, new star sign that the sun is pointing to. So on a clear day, we are able to also see Venus, which is known as the morning star in the curl in the east. And we, if we see Venus in the morning, in the west, we call it the evening star. So they, these are stuff that we, we cannot experiment with that often in the classroom. Because our classroom is during the day. 
and the most that we can learn from stars are at night. So these are information I can teach you, but you have to go outside at night and look at the stars. Okay. But let's finish this page. How many minutes do we have? Five minutes. I think I'm going to save the other video for next lesson, just so that we can finish up this page before we end the lesson. So there's important tips and tricks to know. Stargazing tips. If you want to go watch the stars, two things or three things very important. Go when it is dark. You cannot see the stars at the, during the daytime or when it's starting to go dark. It has to be already dark. So about 9, 10, 9, 10 p.m. currently, it's a good time. Go stargazing when the sky is clear, meaning there is no clouds. We spoke about clouds earlier. So if there's clouds, they block our vision and we cannot see the stars. And the last one, go stargazing in open areas with few electric lights. So in Africa, we like to do camping, but we like to camp in the bush, in the middle of nowhere, where there's no electricity, there's no running water, there's nothing there except nature. So when you are in an area like that, where when it's dark, it's pitch black dark, that's the times where you can see some of the most beautiful skylights and sky nights with the stars and the Milky Way. And you can try and find the constellations while you are doing that. It is really breathtaking to watch the stars when it is a clear, dark night. Also, in Thailand, you cannot go stargazing in Bangkok because Bangkok is too polluted. Okay. And the other one we have to know, this one, these are questions that you will find maybe on your final test. So make a note to read this one a couple of times. Very important. Characteristics of stars. There are three have their own light so they produce light shine all the time never stop shining and the light is stable it's constant and stable and the other side is the characteristics of their planets planets do not have their own light no planets like earth doesn't create light for the universe it receives light from the sun, which is our star. Number two, do not shine. No, we don't shine. And three, our light is unstable. Because the one part of the planet has light, the other part darkness. Because of the rotation of the earth. Okay. So make a, make a note this part is quite important and we'll definitely ask this one in a final test so make sure that you have that down and remember to read it once or twice a week okay so that's all that we're going to do today for stars and for science if you want the opportunity this morning to be teacher in rock paper scissor now is the time please get ready i see not a lot of you have your cameras turned on so uh, not a lot of you probably going to play today, but let's start. I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Yes. yes. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, shoot. Ooh. Hey, everyone has paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Pooh has uh, rock. Yes, I beat Pooh today. Congratulations. Oh, why? You are good. Yeah. Congratulations. He was cheating. How can I cheat? I show you. You, you send a message. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you all for coming to my class. Hope you found some of the inter information interesting. And I'll see you in 20 minutes for occupation. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.